Who would have thought that we could do three parts of different kinds of early humans? I sure didn't, but here we are all learning today as we cover part three of the top 10 extinct human species you were never supposed to learn about. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Sahelanthropus chadensis. This species is one of the oldest known in the human family tree. We are starting right at the beginning. This species is said to have lived about six to seven million years ago in West Central Africa. It is thought that they had the ability to walk upright, and this may have helped them diversify the habitats that they could live in. Although we only have cranial remains of this species, studies have shown that they likely had a mix of ape-like and human-like features. The ape-like features include a small brain, a sloping face, really prominent brow ridges, and an elongated skull. In terms of human-like features, it is said that they had smaller canine teeth, a shorter middle part of their face, and a spinal cord opening underneath the skull, which likely helped them to walk walk on two feet. It wasn't until 2001 when the remains of this species were discovered, making it quite a recent discovery. With this discovery came the knowledge that early humans were a bit more widespread at the time than we had originally believed. In our number 9 spot today we have Auroran tagenesis. Also referred to as the Millennium Man, this species is another one of the earliest on the human family tree, and they are said to have lived about 6 million years ago. This species was discovered in 2001 by a team of French paleontologists who were searching in the Tunjin Hills region of Central Kenya. Here they found over a dozen fossils that belonged to the early humans of this time period. The people of this species are said to have been about the size of a chimpanzee, and they had small teeth with thick enamel, not unlike us modern humans. While any discovery of early human remains is fascinating and super important, it is said that the most important fossil from this species is that of an upper femur, which shows evidence that this is a species that was bipedal. They likely still climb trees and that sort of a thing, but they also likely walked upright. In our number 8 spot today we have Ardipithecus cadaba. This is a species that had its discovery in 1997, but when the paleontologist who first found a piece of lower jaw lying on the ground, B didn't think that he had just discovered a new species. After 10 more specimens were found, however, it was safe to say that a new early human ancestor had been identified. The remains, which included this jaw, as well as hand and foot bones, partial arm bones, and a collarbone, were dated back to about 5.6 to 5.8 million years ago. The toe bones showed us that this species walked on two feet, and the fossils of other animals found in the area where these early human remains were found showed that they lived in a mix of woodlands and grasslands. Because we have jaw remains, we have been able to conclude that they likely ate a variety of fibrous foods. Their back teeth were larger than a chimpanzee's, but their front teeth were more narrow. In our number 7 spot today we have Ardipithecus ramidus. This is a species that was first reported in 1994, but in 2009 scientists announced that there had been a partial skeleton found. The remains were given the nickname Ardi, and they showed some interesting evidence when it came to trying to determine how this species walked. The foot bones in the skeleton are said to, quote, indicate a divergent large toe combined with a rigid foot. Apparently, this means that we are kind of unsure exactly how they might have walked, but with a pelvis reconstructed from crushed remains that were found, experts found adaptations that would allow both tree climbing as well as bipedal activities. Artie's remains were discovered alongside other animal remains that showed she lived in a more wooded environment, which showed us that early human species started walking on two feet for reasons other than because they lived in open grassy areas. In our number 6 spot today we have Homo gotengensis. This is an early human species that is said to have quite large teeth which help them chew up their heavy plant diet. This species is said to have still had quite small brains, but that they also likely produced stone tools and that they may have even made fires as there is evidence of burnt animal bones alongside their remains that have been found. This species wasn't the tallest of the early humans, standing at about 3 feet tall. This species walked upright on 2 feet, but experts have said that they likely spent a significant amount of time in the trees. Researchers believe that this species lacked speech and language skills, and because of their anatomy and their geological age, at this point in time, experts think that while we, as modern humans, are a close relative of this species, we are not a direct ancestor. In our number 5 spot today we have Homo ergaster. This is a species that has caused quite a controversy in the scientific world. Some experts out there believe that this species should be combined into the species of H. erectus that we spoke about on part 1 of this series, but not everyone is on board with this idea. This is still a dispute that is ongoing with those who are responsible for classifying these sorts of 
of things, but as of right now, they are still their own classification with a name that roughly translates to working man. This name comes from the more advanced tools this species used in comparison to some of the older ancestors. Fossils found from this species are said to date back somewhere between 1.7 to 1.4 million years ago, but it is noted that they may have lived for a longer time than this. Some of the features that separate this species from others of their time are their longer legs, their larger body mass, their smaller jaws and teeth, which shows a change in diet, and just different body proportions in general. Some researchers believe that this species might be the earliest true representative of the genus Homo, which is the one that we belong to. In our number 4 spot today we have Homo keprenensis. So this species is a tricky one. Basically, we aren't entirely sure about this group yet. This is actually a proposed name for a human species that is only known from one single specimen that was found. Found in 1994, this discovery came in the form of a skull cap and was found in Italy by an Italian archaeologist named Italo Bedetu. The features found on this bone are sort of in the middle between some of the other more well known early human species. The remains were nicknamed the Caprano Man after a nearby town, and the remains were dated back to some somewhere from 500,000 to 350,000 years ago. Hopefully with more research maybe we can find other similar remains and learn more about this really mysterious species. In our number 3 spot today we have Homo rodentiensis. This is a species that was discovered when researchers found the cranium of a member of the species in a lead and zinc mine located in what is now Zambia. This skull was found in 1921 by a man named Tom Zwigler who was a Swiss miner actually. Aside from the skull, the species species has been able to be identified through other remains that were also found which includes an upper jawbone, a sacrum, a tibia, and two other femur fragments. According to experts it is said that whoever the skull that was found belonged to must have been quite a large man. It also features one of the largest brow ridges of any hominid remains. This skull was initially called the Rhodesian man, but it is now mostly referred to as the broken hill skull or the cobway cranium. In our number 2 spot today we have Homo sapiens adultu. This group is an extinct subspecies of Homo sapiens that is said to have lived about 160,000 years ago in Pleistocene Africa. The adultu part of the name of the species comes from the Saho Afar word that means eldest or firstborn. This species was able to be identified from remains that were found at Hurtoburi, which is in Ethiopia. The region is one that is under volcanic layers, and while these remains were first found in 1997 by Tim White, it wasn't until 2003 that they were first unveiled. Among among the remains were three well preserved crania or skulls, the best preserved one being from an adult male. In our number one spot today we have the Red Deer Cave People. This is a group of people who are the most recent group found to not resemble modern humans. The fossils that have been found have been able to be dated back to somewhere around 14,000 to 11,000 years ago. These fossils were found in the Red Deer Cave and Longling Cave which are located in China. These fossils showed that these people had a mix of archaic and more modern features, so it is thought that they could perhaps be a separate species of humans that, prior to their extinction, didn't end up contributing to the gene pool that created us modern humans. It's a strange discovery because of how recent they are thought to have lived. By this time, all other prehistoric human species were thought to have died out. This coupled with their more primitive features is why some scientists believe they are a species yet to be classified, but other scientists are still a bit reluctant, which is why they don't yet have a scientific name. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you another time very soon, I'm sure. Bye!